you know, I grew up in a house with my grandma, my great grandma, a house full of women. They were some praying women. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> and it was very uh, traditional where, you know, you make sure you pray for your food. It was it was so many rules. But one thing you did <clears throat> was honor God. And I talk, I think I told you uh, growing up, man, my grandma taught me how to pray. I forgot the first prayer that I say, now that I lay me down to sleep. You know? So pray I remember that one. When I, if I should die before I wake, I pray the Lord, my soul to take. And I probably said that to about 16. <laughs> and a lot of us did, right? A lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of us. I loved it, though. So my grandmother, once she passed away, I grew up with this. I never asked. So my prayer was that. And then it transitioned to uh, just being thankful, God. Thank you for another day. Uh, God, thank you for your grace and mercy. I, it got it evolved over the years. But God, thank you for another day. Please forgive me for my sins. And it was such a basic prayer. Mm -hmm. But it carried me, man. I just figured as long as I say that. I'm giving respect to the man above. And uh, that was my basic years. Mm -hmm. So I asked you just in the most basic way, I'm going to start off asking you, why do we pray? I know my mom and them tell me all this, but why do we pray? It's simple. Um, it goes back to the book of Genesis when God created man and woman. Um, prayer is uh, an earthly license for heavenly intervention. Mm -hmm. Let me do that again. Um, prayer is an earthly license for heavenly intervention. In other words, um, without us, God won't. And without God, we can't. So if there's no common union or communion with God, no, no conversation with God, God's not going to move in the earth realm. God doesn't violate his word. He gave us the earth to adopt, to have dominion over. And so when, when it is that we need God to move on our behalf, or we need to see God's hand, we need to call on God through prayer. Okay. If in most simplest terms, that's what prayer really is. And so um, a lot of things uh, that we do, we should consult God in prayer, um, whether it be a job, it might be a spouse, it might be a boyfriend or girlfriend. We should really try to spend time and consult God with moving because it's an earthly license for heavenly intervention. And a lot of times we exclude God when we get into emergencies and that's when we want God to intervene. Okay. And it's available for everybody. It's available for everybody. Okay. And I, and, I, and like I said, when I first started, I was so basic, man. And I think it wasn't until I got <clears throat> older that I started to evolve more. Because for the longest time, I I had a hard time. I'm going to be humble. I had a hard time believing that <clears throat> God really cared. Like all these people in the world that I really had a connection with God and he cared about what I was praying about and so I always keep it basic. Like this man got so much going on. I'm not talking to him about nothing. I'm just going to say, hey, thank you for another day. Uh, you know, thank you. I say my grace for my food. But I kept it simple for a long time. And mm -hmm. then I start to evolve after, you know, you have some situations in life where you'd be like, boy, whoo, it got to be God. Boy, cause I don't know how I made it out of that one. Right, right, right. No, man, prayer doesn't have to be longer drawn out. Mm -hmm. It does want to hear from us. But he don't hear from us when we need something. We need him because he's the very essence of who we are. But he doesn't want to just hear from you through prayer when you want your lights, you know, paid for. you need the mortgage or the rent paid for. God wants to hear from you on a on an everyday basis. Um, and we have to understand it's through prayer that we learn how to shape and frame our world as well. Right. We have to have courage in our prayers. We go before God, the throne room of throne room of grace boldly. But the thing about it is most of us don't understand that prayer is an art. And so we do learn the art of prayer and we get better at it as we start studying what prayer actually is. And but but when we don't, we have a basic knowledge of it. And so we do, you know, surface prayers like, hey, you know, bless my food or take care of the family. Uh, for me, cover the family today under the blood of Jesus. Um, we do prayers like that, but when it is that we start taking it deeper, uh, we understand that the heart of God um, is for everybody, meaning that my prayer should not just be for my personal needs. 
Um, I should be covering like, hey, I get up this morning and I'm praying, hey, man, you know, the Lord put it on my heart to pray for you and you don't even know it. And and while you're traveling down to the job, you missed an accident. And that's because God used somebody. It couldn't have been. It might have not been me. It might have been somebody else. God used somebody uh, to talk about you or to lift your name up to him. And so it kept you covered while you were somewhere else. We got, you know, intercessors. And that means one who stands in between on different continents. Um, Africa, Asia, you know, we, we, we have people praying around this nation. And I think that as a nation, uh, we've become weakened because we've taken prayer out of everything, especially our mm -hmm. school. We see all of these different things happening in the schools with the children um, from from murders to to, uh, you know, mass shootings, um, um, uh, everything, everything going on in the schools. And that's because we don't have public prayer there anymore. Um, we have to understand that once once we establish the Lordship of Christ in an area and we set rule and residence for God to move in a particular area, then God is responsible to take care of is that he has enlisted to us. All right. Well, <clears throat> listen, like you said, I, I learned about prayer. I, I really, really in hindsight, 2020. So I'm thankful for my mom. Cause, oh, my, my mom, boy, you wake up with uh, oil running down your head. You know, I come from that type of family. Yeah. In hindsight, some of those situations I had, we had some situations like, boy, it had to be prayer, you know, so that grace and mercy was a thing. Um, the thing that I learned, and I'm going to tell you something, I'm adamant that I went years, I was so mad at God, I went years without praying, which is crazy. You know what I mean? And then one of my mentors, my mentor, one of my mentors was uh, RJ Henley, uh, Pastor Henley, who went on. But I remember almost like I talked to God, like, if you God, show me. Like, I don't know, if it, I'm pretty sure I ain't the only person to be that arrogant. Like you show me, like I like, I don't know what my mind was then. It's maybe immature, or just ignorant. But show me, and I wanted him to uh, heal my grandmother who was sick at the time. And I swear to God, man, I was so angry because I said, God, if you real, heal my grandmother, blah blah blah. And she passed away, and I was so confused. And then, cause she was really sick. And I remember uh, Pastor Henley at the time saying, think about what you prayed for. Say, you wanted her to be healed, but the healing came in her. Yes, sir. Yes, bro, sir. that hurt me so bad. So I, from then on, man, I, 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 oh, boy, that was something that hurt me for a long time. Yeah. Well, the Bible is clear, right? He says, his thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. So are the heavens are higher than the earth. So is his thoughts um, higher than ours. We have to understand what prayer really is, right? Nothing enters the earth realm legally without prayer. And the thing is, is God answers prayers. You just have to be willing to accept the answer, right? And so your answer was, okay, I'll heal her, but, but I'm going to bring her home to do so. And like I said the same thing when it came down to a couple of loved ones on my side. And once it happened once or twice, I had to understand, okay, while they were here, they were suffering. They were on medication, popping mm -hmm. pills, doing this, doing that, sticking themselves with needles. And maybe it just wasn't to be here for us. We don't understand as a human race, oftentimes we get very selfish. Mm -hmm. And we get selfish. We want our loved ones, when it's time for them to transition, we want to keep them here. But does keeping them here involve them still suffering? physical pain and oftentimes we don't understand that the answer to our prayer god knows what's best while, while we can try to figure it out with our finite minds god is infinite and he has all knowledge he has all power and so the healing again he did answer your prayer it wasn't what you wanted mm -hmm. but he gave you an answer and so that brings me to the conclusion every now and then um god will tell you no just to give you a better yes and that was your better yes the healing was on the side. Yeah, and listen, you know, I'm a fool. I remember uh, we had a, a aunt uh, on my grandma's side. She was like 99. I said, boy, I was so mad with them. This lady will tell y'all she ready to go home and y'all are crying and acting a fool. Still. Still. <laughs> you know, when you see somebody at 99, something she gone too soon. Well, what are y'all talking about? This woman has had a life like 
man, you got to get to a point where you just really understand some things. Um, what else I want to ask you? I want to ask you about some of the stuff we pray for, and and, and that's going to be another subject. I'm hopefully everybody listens to what we all said to this point. Yeah. Because some of the stuff I hear people pray for, I'd be wanting to, I just lose my mind. Mm -hmm. I, I lose my mind. I say, that's what makes me say, do we understand prayer fully? We don't. Do we understand. We don't. Um, Jesus gave us a very simple outline in the book of Matthew, the 11th chapter. And he says these things. In, in, in his statement, he said, if you believe when you pray, you'll have what you say. Mm. I, I'm, I'm going to say that again. I, mm. I, some people hate it. Yeah. He says, if you believe when you pray, you'll have what you say. He starts that statement out in the King James Version. It says have faith in God. But the original Greek context really says have the faith of God. What is the faith of God? That's a good question. The faith of God is this. We have to go back to the, to the beginning when he created the heavens and the earth. We all know that story. The faith of God is simple. And this is something we don't think about on an everyday basis. He believed the matter. Well, let me go back. He conceived it. He thought of something in his mind. In his mind. He believed it. He spoke it, then he watched it manifest. That's the yeah. faith of God. He he can see, he believed, he spoke, then watched it manifest. A lot of us, the things that we ask God for, we believe that it's too much for us to handle or too mm -hmm. big for us to do, that we often put our own limitations of who we are on God. So then we'll pray, but did we believe when we prayed? You really didn't believe that God was going to give you no Lamborghini today. So you went and you asked, but you asked trying to test God to see if he would. But he lay outlined a principle for us when he said, if you believe when you pray, you'll have what you say. And a lot of us don't mix the belief system in with what we're praying for, which is why a lot of us error or we miss answer prayer. 